he's capable of doing something dirty. You know he's capable of coming up. Not that he's a dirty player, but he's going to take every bit of edge that he can get. So he may hit you, he may run through you, whatever it is. That edge gives him the advantage defensively, but this is clearly contact for nothing flame. Well, Beverly, his whole mindset, he's talked about this. He says, players want to be comfortable. I'm getting up in your grill. I'm going to make you uncomfortable. He said, I hate being pressured if I play myself. I probably want to fight myself as well. But that's his whole role is to go out there and make the guy he's guarding as, com as uncomfortable as possible. Well, think about it. Bruce Bowen, if I defended you, you wouldn't be concerned about me going underneath you. Bruce Bowen's an outstanding defender, but he also has that ability where you think this dude may do something dirty. I, I just, when a guy's hurt and you don't know if he's hurt, to sort of mock him when he's down. I agree with that. That's over the top, I think. But that's part of the reason why Patrick Beverly was able to withstand Agreed. everything in his career and still make it to the league. And I would, if I was coach, I'd like, keep competing. <laughs> You're doing well. I can't believe we're still watching this. Well, the officials they must watching. be considering it being a flag. Yes, that would be my guess. They're gonna call. I mean, if you watch this long, you're gonna call a flag. I would suspect it's not a flag. Here's David Guthrie. That's a replay review. There's unnecessary contact by Beverly. It takes out Paul's legs. It'll be a three-shot foul. Flagger penalty one. Flagger penalty one. I totally disagree. Unnecessary contact for Flavor One. Let's bring in Steve Jaddy, a long-time terrific referee, back in the studio. Good evening, Steve. You saw the replay. What are your thoughts on whether or not that's a flavor? Uh, good evening, Mike. Yeah, I um, I personally think he's fighting around a pick, not even knowing that Chris Paul is going to go up for a jump shot. So, in my opinion, I wouldn't have called it a flavor foul. Obviously, it's up in his upward shooting motion, so it'd be three shots. But in my opinion, I don't. I think he's just fighting around a pick. And I didn't think it was a flagrant foul. Thank you, Steve. I well, like that Patrick Bentley even comes over towards us, four seats away, five seats away. It's Chris Paul's brother. Let him be aware of the fact that's nothing dirty. It's just a good play. I'm not here competing. Paul made the smart play to draw the contact. Beverly just trying to fight over through that screen, and because of Paul's direction, he took a very upper fall. And there you see the two of them fighting on each other. All okay. These are two of the toughest competitors the league has. They get after they'll do anything to get an edge, both of them. And they can talk like that. And as soon as the ball inbound, we're going back to being competitors. So on the play here, we get the free throws plus possession. So it's a very important call. Throws it up, Aiton! Oh, beautiful move for Aiton! That's a five-point possession for the Suns, and they're back within four. You gotta trust the customer. That's a tough pass, a great catch and finish. Defense, 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 George to Batum. Defense, Morris puts it on the floor. Across the lane. Morris pull up Jeffrey. Got it. 22 points for Marcus Morris. He's 9 of 13 from the field. What a performance of Morris, who has really struggled so far in this series. Eight down low. Does not get the roll. And those were cash in the first four games. George on the pop. Nails a three. Paul George answers. And it's back up to nine. George has 12 of his 23 points here in this third period. Knocks down the long ball. And Marcus Morris continues the roll. He let him play one on one. He's got it going. He's keeping his foot on the gas. Booker is a great free throw shooter. And this is that one. It's Cam Johnson back in. And big play from their forward spot. 
Again, without a big man, Toronto Lou going small. He did play DeMarcus Cousins six minutes in the first half. Cousins had ten because that man not playing. And two missed free throws from Booker. Booker, one of the premier free throw shooters in the game. 93% in the series. George connects again. Paul George from downtown. And the lead is up to 12. And those people probably saying you should have shut up in the first half. No, this is the Paul George that we wanted to see. He's too great of a player to just be a regular guy out on the floor. Cam Johnson. Oh, what a smooth stroke this young man has. George to Beverly. Beverly's going to try a three-pointer. Patrick Beverly from downtown. All of a sudden, the Clippers hitting threes. And Monty Williams wants a timeout. But it all starts with the aggression of Paul George on the offensive end. No indecisions. Attack. Second defender comes. Find Beverly. Wide open three. And then they switch. Payne, for some reason, goes under. And Paul George just rises up. Clippers by 12.